Conf. I'm excited to talk to you today about migrating your website to Netlify one page at a time. My name is Taylor McDonald. I am partner and CTO at Ample. We're a Jamstack-focused digital agency located in downtown Cincinnati. So by now you're already familiar with the advantages of the Jamstack. Security, scale, speed, and developer experience. But if you're dealing with a monolithic application, one that's probably been around for a few years, migrating your site to this new modern architecture can feel a little overwhelming. So today I want to focus on the least painful path off that monolithic app and onto the Jamstack, something I like to call gradual migration. Now this strategy simply refers to standing up a new site and selectively moving over pages one by one over time. Now when I say page, I'm referring to any accessible path on your site. The benefit of this strategy when compared to other approaches, like a Big Bang cutover for example, is that it carries much lower risk for your organization and allows you to ease into the new solution at your own pace while paying down technical debt as you go. Let me show you how it works. So imagine this is an illustration of traffic coming into your website. You got an end user on the right making a connection to the site on the left. Let's also consider that each page or path on your site is represented by this little HTML icon. Now building on this analogy, we imagine more users and more pages. Obviously, this is an oversimplification. But let's assume that the engine powering the creation of these pages is a monolithic framework like Drupal, WordPress, or Magento. Now the first step towards gradual migration is to stand up a new site and stick it in between the end user and the old site. You can see our traffic patterns haven't changed here. They're now just being routed through this new system before they get passed off to the old site. Then, starting with the highest priority pages, we're going to move those over one by one to the new website. Now, any pages migrated to the new system will be served from there, and any pages not yet migrated are going to remain where they are, served from the older system. Now, the critical takeaway is that as traffic comes into the new site, it's automatically passed through to the old site as necessary. So eventually, once you've migrated everything over, there's no more traffic being routed back to your old system. You can dismantle that infrastructure and call it a day. Now, let's take a look at a real-world example. So let's pretend that we're going to redesign jamstack.org. Now the first thing I'm going to do is create an index.html file. Now there's nothing special about this file. I'm just going to paste in some markup, basically a logo and some links. And then I'm going to create a text file called underscore redirects. Now inside this file I'm going to put a single line of code which will tell Netlify how to route traffic relative to the pass-through pattern that we just discussed. Okay, and now I'm going to use the Netlify CLI tool to link this uh, project up to a Netlify site that I have created earlier. Okay, and then I'm going to use the same CLI tool to deploy this project directly to the CDN. Okay, it should be done. Now let's open this up in a web browser. Okay, so you can see my HTML rendered here. Now don't judge my design. It's just a proof of concept after all. Obviously, there's nothing special here, but check out what happens when I start clicking through the navigation. The first thing you'll notice is that when I click on links for pages that I haven't created yet, I'm not getting 404 responses from the server. I'm actually being served content from the site that we specified in our redirects file. Also notice, the host name didn't change. As far as the end user is concerned, this is just one big website. Okay, so what just happened? By adding the redirect file to our published directory, we told Netlify to serve physical pages that were deployed to the CDN first. And then for any request it can't handle, instead of returning a 404 to the end user, we're going to pass that traffic off to jamstack.org. Now remember, the navigation continued to function across both sites, and the host name didn't change regardless of whether I was on my new Netlify project or I was on jamstack.org. Now we've got a solution that will allow us to selectively override individual pages at our own pace. So how exactly does this work? Well, it's all thanks to this thing called the reverse proxy. Now, not surprisingly, a reverse proxy is the opposite of a forward proxy. Uh, a forward proxy is designed to hide the client's identity. If you've ever used a proxy server to access a YouTube video from another geographic location, for example, then you know what I'm talking about. So if the forward proxy shields the client from the server, the reverse proxy pattern shields the server's identity from the client. It's a simple concept, but it gives us a ton of control over handling our traffic. Now, I should note that this pattern is not unique to Netlify. They just happen to create a super elegant solution for the implementation of the same concept. Now, sending users to different applications based on the request is trivial. And this approach can even help us defend against things like DDoS attacks. And since the server-side details are hidden, the end user has no clue that they're accessing a completely different website. The host name never changed. And also, we can keep our redirect rules in the repository so we get the benefits of visibility, 
revision control, and our team now has access to manipulate traffic patterns right alongside our code. And once we got this solution in place, we can start talking about even cooler concepts like micro front ends. So what the heck is a micro front end? Well, the idea of micro front end architecture really has more to do with how you structure your teams than anything. Now, in the interest of time, I'm not going to be able to dig too deep into that concept, but I would like to illustrate how this plays out architecturally. So following our early analogy, let's say that this is an illustration of web traffic coming into your website. You've got some products for sale, a blog, maybe a handful of other random marketing pages. Let's also assume that these pages are driven by one big monolithic application that does everything. And now that we know how to proxy web traffic under a single host name, we can start applying the same strategy here. So instead of one big application, we can start thinking about our infrastructure like this, where each distinct section of our website is a different application entirely. The end user still just sees a single host name and can traverse the entire site as if it were just one big project, uh, but now we have greater flexibility to evolve our infrastructure over time. And the cool part is, is that since the KPIs and UX concerns for a blog are distinctively different than e-commerce, for example, we can assign ownership of each application to different teams who have the skills to meet those objectives. And since these are all individual projects, we don't have to worry about teams stepping on each other's toes. We can deploy at will, or we can use different technologies that may be better suited for the needs of that particular team. So this is great. Especially because now we know we can accomplish this level of flexibility with a single line and a text file. But the solution is not without its challenges either. So probably the first thing you'll notice is that page speed, specifically our time to interactive metric, takes a slight hit with this strategy. Now the severity of this problem will scale depending upon the choices you make and how many different frameworks you're using. Now while some of this is accepted risk, there's a few options available to us. Performance budgets are a great first step, particularly when plugged directly into your CI pipeline. There's a ton of benchmarking tools that can deliver near real-time feedback for your QA team so you can ensure that any updates keep page speed within an acceptable range. If you're using a module bundler like Webpack or Parcel, you're going to get code splitting for free. And now that HTTP2 is a thing, this approach dove extre dovetails extremely well as it encourages smaller bundles delivered to the client on an as-needed basis. Lastly, consider vendoring shared libraries or packages together so you get the benefit of cacheability while also reducing the footprint of any one endpoint. Second challenge, how do we ensure the products present consistent user experience? Well, we could start by implementing a global style sheet across everything. Now, this is a good idea for baseline styles, but in practice, this approach gets pretty brittle pretty fast. There's also this idea of server-side page composition, and there's a couple Node.js projects to address the need. Podium and Single Spot are two such examples. Now, these solutions require a node process to work, so while it's not really jam stacky, I figured it was worth a mention. Lastly, the solution we found to be the most scalable is this idea of JS-based component libraries. You can keep your markup, style, and functionality all in one place and reuse it everywhere. There's a lot of benefits to this approach, everything from tooling to automation to maintainability. It's also a great segue into the concept of design systems, which you could think of as a single source of truth for your user interface. Now lastly, you may need to deploy your work to several different environments, staging, QA, production, etc. As revolutionary as deployment previews are, some clients aren't quite ready to make the jump to a true continuous delivery environment. And while I love the redirect solution that Netlify has engineered, it does have some limitations, particularly if you need to swap out redirect rules based on your environmental context. So one option is to maintain a copy of redirects for each environment and swap them out at build time. Another idea is to create a simple bash or sed script that could rewrite that field file at build time. And we found both of these approaches to be a little clunky, so we came up with another solution custom build plugins. Of course, this only applies if you're hosting uh, via Netlify. Now, meet the newest member of the official Netlify plugin registry, Netlify Plugin Replace. Now, this is actually just a glorified string replacement library for environment variables, but it allows you to swap out these types of values post-build before your project is deployed. Now, this example shows the syntax for specifying variables inside a redirects file, but it's configurable too if you don't like this format. Check it out in the Netlify admin UI or visit us at ample.co slash Netlify plugin replace to learn more. And that's it. Thank you so much for your time. To learn more about any of the things I've covered today, please come visit us at ample.co slash jamstack.